This quiet little shack sits in ruin on the banks of Lower Prospect, Nova Scotia. Well, at least it did, up until the summer of 2020, when it seems to have disappeared overnight, torn down before it could fall down and hurt somebody. There isn't much to say about this house, as so little is known about it, but what we do know about it is worth preserving in this small video before the site is gone completely from local memory. It was known as the Norris House, made of wood beams and wooden shingles, weathered down over the years to being pretty much just pieces of driftwood. The exact year that it was built is uncertain. Some sources say it was built as early as 1820, but I find that one a little bit hard to believe. We can, however, say with certainty that it was built prior to 1873, making it at least around 150 years old. Because in the early hours of April 1st, 1873, Richard Norris, the man of the house, awoke to find a behemoth stranded on the shore less than a mile away. The White Star Line steamer SS Atlantic had run up on the rocks of the nearby Mars Island. From this window, he and his family saw distress rockets firing into the night sky. Through this doorway, Richard Norris emerged as he put on his heavy coat. And from this shore, he boarded a seine boat to bring him and other fishermen of the village out to the island to help pull those off of the foundering liner. Richard Norris was one of the first locals on the scene of the disaster, along with Edmund Ryan and Michael Clancy. Together with others, they made several trips out to the wreck and rescued all that they could. Despite their best efforts, not a single woman and only two children were saved from the ship before it was swept beneath the rough waves. Survivors of the shipwreck were rowed off of Mars Island and back here to Lower Prospect, where they were warmed up and fed in the houses of the village, including this one. Who knows how many of Atlantic's passengers and crew went through this door as the dawn broke, still in shock as to what had happened to their ship. Given the stuff that we found inside while we explored it, it looks like this house was last lived in in the 1980s or the 1990s. It started to collapse shortly after that, being battered by the harsh Nova Scotian winter storms, similar to the one that had wrecked the Atlantic. Fishing homes do not last that long in Nova Scotia. They're usually built temporarily, and of course with the harsh seas and the harsh winds coming in, they really don't last maybe more than a couple generations. So it's actually really rare to see any structures around that are connected to the SS Atlantic. I mean, the ship itself doesn't even really survive on the ocean floor. The captain of the Atlantic said that they were taken care of in a hut, and some people thought that hut was kind of condescending with regards to their houses, but just so you can kind of see, this is what a hut looks like compared to what um, it's described as by the captain. I mean, this is a pretty good solid house, especially for the time period and in the living conditions we're talking about right here on the shore. After at least two decades of neglect, it was torn down to prevent people from getting hurt inside. This house was one of the last tangible, contemporary reminders of the SS Atlantic disaster. The ship is practically gone on the seafloor, and nearly every house that stood at the time and harbored survivors is also gone. As far as I'm aware, this was the last house standing from that time that was involved in the disaster. The footage you're seeing was shot in 2018, in the second to last summer that the house stood through. I was going to use it in my documentary I made about the SS Atlantic disaster, but I ended up cutting this. That documentary I mentioned is available on my YouTube channel if you're interested in learning more about the wreck of the SS Atlantic. Be sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this.